Oh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, actually a pretty nice day out today. It's, uh, winter's closing in. It's been really chilly in the uh, overnights and early mornings, but today it's actually a nice brisk. I'd say it's probably not more than like maybe 50 or 55 right now. There's a light chill in the air, but anyway. Winter's closing in fast. I have not found any property to move to quite yet. So, looks like I'm going to be stuck here this winter, unfortunately. But, that being said, winter's here. And even though I got a brand new gas furnace, I think that uh, wood heat is superior. Way, way, way better. I mean, it's just so much better. And I've got a whole lot of wood here. You can see right here behind me. I'll get a better shot of it here in a moment. But uh, I need to start hauling this into the back. Put it in the basement because I've got a wood furnace that heats my house. It's really freaking awesome. And uh, get prepped for winter. So hopefully, hopefully by spring. I'm going to be uh, definitely out of this place and start rebuilding in the country because I'm really getting tired of living here in the city. It's noisy, got neighbors within 100 feet of me in every direction and it's just annoying. Taxes were doubled earlier this year. I don't even have enough money to pay my taxes at the normal rate. Now they want me to pay double this year and it's like, holy shit. So, everything I look at in the pro out in the country is like, I've seen stuff as low as like three to eight dollars a year for taxes. To a couple of larger plots with some small development on them, up to like 130 to like 250, which is really nice. And uh, everything that I've been reading about, <clears throat> as long as uh. I don't know if this is entirely accurate, but everything that I've read is that uh, if you don't put like a permanent foundation underneath your cabin, or if you don't have electric, you know, like a you know on grid like an electric line ran to the cabin or whatever, technically they can never rate it as a residential. So you're still just like an off grid cabin, and apparently that affects your taxes. Like they can't raise them or something. They're stuck at like what the land value is since the house isn't. Even though it's not a movable cabin, but just having it on like piers or something, apparently that affects the way they, the way everything is calculated on what you owe. And uh, I'm going to do that to avoid being recognized as a resident so they can't increase my taxes. But everywhere I'm looking at is way out in the country. So hopefully, you know, out in the country and well out of city limits. So hopefully that's going to definitely affect everything overall. There's my monsters back there. In the gate, we're going to be letting these guys out here shortly. Because uh, we need to start hauling some of this wood in the back. Anyway, let's get to it. Alright everybody, this is my wood supply out on the driveway. This is... Uh, I believe at least two, it was like three or four rows thick, but now it's down to like two for most of it. There's a little bit here in the front here, a third row that's almost gone. <clears throat> but I need to start hauling this to the backyard, put it in the basement, ready for winter. So I gotta, normally I'd take this stuff here, this huge pile right here, that's all black locust wood that I've had sitting there for at least three or four years now because I was wanting to make sure it was the driest because black locust is like the premium wood for Missouri I mean that stuff this stuff burns really good so I was making sure it was well dried that and you know I buried it behind other wood and it took me years to get to it but <clears throat> I have to get started right here with this stack here first in the center because I'm climb up here at some point over the last while, this wood's just been shifting up here. 
And as you can see, this entire center stack has shifted almost two feet away from the fence. And it's leaning this way into the driveway. And before it falls and crushes my dogs or hits my car when I'm backing in or anything, or just falls in general and blocks the driveway, I need to get this all cleared out. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the center stuff first. So, anyway, I'm going to get back down out of here safely. Get down. Papa, I know. You can't come up here. Alright. Alright. Well, let's get loading and getting this hauled to the back. Puppy. Woo! <laughs> 
huge load this time. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try. Whew. Watch out. This is a very inefficient system. Having to move the wood multiple times. But that's what I've got at the moment. If I want to get the maximum amount down in here. Woo. Sinking. When I'm up in the country, I'm going to definitely set up a firewood system a lot better. I've been thinking about it for a while. I'm thinking wherever I put the fireplace at, centralized in the house. Behind it, either to the left or right or both sides, I'm going to build fire boxes that are insulated on the inside and insulated on the back wall. But I'm going to have that back wall open up behind the, behind the wood storage. That way I can load... I can just haul wood up to the back of the house. I'm not going to store it by the back of the house because I don't want all the bugs and spiders right by the house. But hopefully I'll be able to afford a loader or something. Eventually, find a cheap one. And wherever I've got my wood stored, I can haul up to the back of the house, open up that back door. It'll be insulated inside. Stack the firewood inside. Close the back wall of the house. And that'll be, of course, insulated wall. So inside, when I open it up, it'll be insulated and no... No cold weather will transfer between the two. At least not much. It'll be very little. That way, wood will be easily just hauled right up to the back of the house and then stacked right inside next to the furnace. And then I won't have to uh, mess with doing anything like this. I'm not going to have a basement or anything where I'm moving. But uh, instead of trying to haul it inside and through the doorway and across the room and everything like I do now with my freestanding wood furnace. I got a, I'll show it later on the video, but I've got a uh, 
cast iron freestanding wood furnace in the living room of this house too, but I'm going to take that one with me when I move to the country. But I've also got a really nice wood furnace in the basement of this house that heats the entire house. And that's awesome. It's going to suck losing it, but uh, it's way too heavy and too big to get out of here and it's meant for it's meant for heating really large houses. It's not going to be a you know, that freestanding one I've got in the living room will be more than enough for a little five to 700 square foot cabin. So anyway, let's get back to it. Still got to fill this cavity. Another travel video out to the wood. You guys are wondering about this long path the way this yard is set up there was here, let me swing around but when I moved in here this was a all open here and it was a ramp of earth going down out here and prior to putting in this fence there was just barely enough room to get like a small van or a small truck with a trailer up this hill between this tree and the other driveway over there i mean it was like literally had like two inches on each side and uh i did it a couple of times um but after i put the fence in that shortened the gap and uh you just can't, couldn't get a vehicle in here so when i redid the backyard because this used to be a ramp of dirt that went down over here too, almost towards the edge of the house and I had all this dug out, put in a retaining wall, put in deck and everything. But anyway, before all that, you know, you could have gotten up in here. This is the only path into the backyard. I mean, over on the other side of the house, let's see if I can, let's see. There is a big gate on the other side of the house. As you can see, the entire front yard is sloped. It's a, I'd say it's at least, I'd say it's at least a 10 or 12% grade. I think that's right. So you'd have to, I've, I've been able to get like a loader up it through there, way down there at the end of the yard, but don't own one of those. So renting it is too much to deal with, but the yard's too steep. You'd have to dig out a huge amount of dirt back down there to, to create a path up into the backyard. That's another thing I hate about this yard. So. Just, you know, there's no access to the backyard. So, what I've done with wood for the most part was just haul it in here onto the driveway. As you notice, I've got a very large, you know, two to three car width driveway. And I've had tons of wood stored out here before. But I normally just haul the wood in here, split it, you know, cut it up and split it and stack it out here. And then when it comes winter time, just take the long path all the way to the back of the house. So far that's worked pretty well. But anyway, let's get to loading some more wood here. We're almost done with this front part. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. Looks like one more good little plug to it here. Maybe two. We are good to go here. Just need to flip this out a little bit. Make sure the door's closed. I haven't felt like I've needed to heat the entire house yet. It's still not that cold. It's a little chilly at nights, but that's what the smaller furnace in the living room is for. And I'm like really, really hot right now, so I'm not gonna need a fire anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but uh, this will last me, I'd say this is at least three weeks worth of wood sitting in here, maybe four. Depends on how full it gets. Again, you know, sometimes I've sometimes I've been able to get an entire load like this if I stack it nicely in here, <coughs> which I did not this time. I've gotten as many as six weeks out of one load here. Um, but it being really uh, cool lately, but not freezing, I've only been doing little small fires in the cast iron furnace in the living room, and that one. Uh, that one heats the living room and part of the kitchen and the hallways and stuff like that. Primary areas where I'm at right now. Um, but come when it starts getting freezing, you know, I'll probably be back here in the master bedroom sleeping more. And uh, that room is right above the wood furnace, so I mean that room just gets really hot. So I can sleep with a fan on. Feels good. So anyway, let's get this closed up and. It's not, it's not closing the flush, but that's okay. It's all good. Turn this up right here for later use. Yep. That's ready for later. Let's uh, knock this down on the tripod. Alright. So, anyway. What you doing in there? Come on, buddy. You need to stay out of there. That's dangerous in there. It's not for you. And your back legs are barely working. Am I going to have to pull you out of there? Come on, big boy. Come on. Come on. we got to get you out of here. Come on. Come on. I know. Your back legs don't work very well anymore. Yep. Unfortunately, Kunis. He's really having trouble with his back legs. I give him medication, but they're failing on him. He has trouble standing on him. And I have to help him up over most curbs and steps if he's not already up and moving. So. Alright, Kune. I know. It sucks being 14 years old. Yep. Yeah. I'm getting old.